Welcome back to the HTML class. My dear friend, we had invested a lot of time yesterday trying to understand the different tags one has to know when working with text type data. Well, there are few more tags which I feel you must and should know when working with text type data. What are those tags? Let us start with one of the tags which is really helpful called as the abbreviation tag or the ABBR tag. Now, how does this tag work? Let me show you with an example. Assume within the P tag in my Sublime Text Editor, I will just have a sentence. Tap is the best e-learning academy like this. Any confusion till here? Whether you agree or disagree is secondary, but in our hearts, this is very, very important to us. Now, let me just go and execute and show you the output, right? So, if in case I go to my browser window and if in case I just refresh, then you can see I've got the best e-learning academy, any confusion till here. But what I want you to understand, my dear friend, is that when a user is reading this, assume this is on my website, right? I know TAP stands for TAP Academy, but for an outsider, what is TAP means, don't you think he would like to know the full form? Full form is also called as abbreviation. That is what it is called as. Now, I would like such a setup where if in case the cursor is taken on top of this TAP like this, automatically that abbreviation should come below. Tap Academy, how are going to do this? That is where the ABBR tag is used. And let me show you how exactly to use it. So, if I go back to my editor, there you want an abbreviation for TAP. Isn't it? So, you want to format it in such a way that an abbreviation comes when you hover the mouse cursor over it. Well, if that is the case, I will cut TAP. And instead of mechanically putting it inside P tag, I will further put it inside a tag which will help me abbreviate it called as the AWBR tag. So, that's what I will do. Right? I will paste TAP inside this. But if you just do this, it is not going to work because you must understand Obviously, you must also tell the abbreviation tag what has to be the abbreviation for TAP, what should be the abbreviation for TAP TAP Academy, that you must be giving that additional information. Additional information given to a tag is always called as the attribute of a tag, right? More about this as and when we keep learning more tags, you will get used to it. But ABBR also has an attribute. An attribute will always come inside the start tag. So, what's it? I'll go after R and I will leave a space like this. And there I will tell title equal to. Title equal to. And there within quotes, I'm going to tell what should be the full form. So, I will tell TAP Academy like this. Any confusion till this point of time? Wonderful, my friend. If you do this, what would change if in case you ask me, watch it carefully. I will take you to my browser window and there, if in case I just refresh the page, nothing is going to happen much. But do you see, now there is a underline there next to TAP. They have underlined it. Why is that? If you ask me, that is to denote that there is an abbreviation. Now, if I just take the mouse cursor on top of it, as you can see below, it is telling TAP Academy. So, isn't this a very cool feature? Isn't this a very handy feature? Imagine you have WHO. You want WHO, World Health Organization, right? You want WWW, World Wide, World Wide Web. You want that abbreviation to come. Now, this is a very, very handy tool. And when you're working with text, sometimes text will have short forms for which you should give full form of abbreviations. And this tag can definitely help you do this. What other tag should I know about? Let me show you. Okay, now it's time for us to learn something called as HTML entities. Now, what do you mean by an HTML entity and where and when should we be using them if you ask me? Let me give you a simple example. Now, what you call as HTML is a markup language. A markup language is further made out of something called as tags. Now, how do you represent a tag in HTML? Simple. You will put an opening, which is the less than symbol like this and a closing which is a greater than symbol like this. In between you will tell the tag name for example P and I will put the closing tag as well like this I will put the closing tag. Now what you must understand is you can write whatever you want inside this P tag that's okay but these symbols which is less than and greater than they are reserved to denote that it is a tag. Like this there are few symbols in HTML which is reserved which is reserved which have special meaning to them. Right? But what if inside this, I will tell greater than equal to. 
greater than equal to and no no just put equal to symbol equal to and I will leave a space and there I want the symbol of uh, greater than to come right but unfortunately there is a chance that the browser who is executing this HTML code might be confused that hey this symbol is a symbol which is reserved for a tag but unfortunately this uh, person is using that symbol now, does he mean that a tag is going to open or has he forgotten to close the tag? Don't you think the browser will get confused? That is a very, very good use case for HTML entities. You can represent this symbol using an HTML entity. Now, how can the HTML entity be represented and what is the syntax if you ask me? There are few ways in which an HTML entity can be represented. First of all, to denote that it is an HTML entity, it begins with an ampersand like this. It begins with an ampersand like this, right? Next, what happened is, after this ampersand, either you can be providing a decimal value, either you can be providing a hexadecimal value, or you can also be providing a name. However, out of the three ways that I mentioned, which is the decimal, hexadecimal and name, what is always preferred is to make use of the decimal or hexadecimal value or in other words, the numerical value. Because sometimes names, it's easy to remember, but sometimes the browser might not recognize names. But numbers, they will definitely recognize right so for example if i want greater than let me first show you what is the name for it right so like this i will put gt gt like this if in case i do this and also please understand at the end always you must be putting a semicolon so that's what i'm showing semicolon you must be putting any confusion till this point that is the syntax now, if in, and you can see the color changed because now it is recognizing it as an HTML entity. Now, if I go to my browser window and there, if in case I try to execute this piece of code, you can notice this is how the output would look. If I refresh the window, then you have got like this greater than equal to and that greater than symbol has come. But I didn't put the greater than symbol. I used an HTML entity like this there are different names, hexadecimal and decimal values for different kinds of symbols. What are those different symbols? Of course, everything I cannot speak about. Few of them which you will be regularly using is what I would like to speak about. Okay, my friend, now as I told you, not only can you use name, you can also be using a decimal value and a hexadecimal value also. So let me demonstrate that. I'll remove GT, right? Now, I want to give a decimal value. Now, if you are giving a numerical value, irrespective of whether it is decimal or hexadecimal, you must add a hash there. Hash indicating that you are going to give a numerical value. Now, the numerical value for the greater than symbol is this, 62. Any confusion till this point of time? Now, will this give me the same output? 100%. Let me take you to my browser window. There, if in case I refresh it, you can notice nothing will change because whether it is GT or whether it is hash 62, it is nothing but the greater than symbol. Let me also show you its hexadecimal version. If in case I go here and remove that 62, hash remains. But I will put the hexadecimal value, which is like this, X3E, like this. Any confusion till here? Now, if in case I go and I also just uh, refresh the page, nothing changes. It remains exactly the same. Any confusion till this point of time? Now, one more question that some of you will be having is, where will I get to know these values? Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to Google and type HTML entities and you will get the complete chart. Whichever symbol you want, you can be copying that and pasting it. Today, after all, you're web developers. You're living in the World Wide Web. Getting any information you want from the web is very, very easy. It's just one Google search away. I hope I'm clear till this point of time. Another common HTML entity which you guys will be using regularly is an entity called as the non-breaking space. Now, what do you mean by this non-breaking space? See, let me show you an example. Assume like this, I will tell hello and I will leave five spaces. One, two, three, four, five spaces like this. 
and I will tell bye. Now the thing is, according to you, this is how the sentence should look. Hello, followed by five spaces and bye. This is how it should look. But if in case I were to execute this piece of code, you would notice that is not how the output you will get. If I refresh it, you can notice this is the output. And please look in between hello and bye and tell me, how many spaces do you think is present? Just a single space. We left five spaces. But the browser has conveniently removed four spaces and preserved only a single space, which means in a way it has chopped or truncated the extra spaces. Anything more than one, it has chopped. Now, in certain situations, this could be a very useful thing to happen. Maybe accidentally you put some spaces and then the browser conveniently removed it. But in few other cases, you would require the spaces to be preserved. Now, what to do if you ask me? It's very, very easy, my dear friend. All you have to do is, instead of pressing space, you insert a HTML entity called as the non-breaking space. Any confusion till there? Now, how does this look like? Very simple. I'll remove these spaces. And you know the syntax for an HTML entity, ampersand. I'm not using decimal value. I'm not using hexadecimal value. So hash I will not put. I'll directly put the name. And this is the name. N-D-S-T. -E, like this. Non-breakable space. Right? I'll copy this and person N-B-S-P. And paste it four more times. Right? But you must always understand to tell that this is a non-breakable space, you must always put a semicolon at the end. That is very important. Otherwise, you will not understand. So, after every P, I will put a semicolon. See, now color changes. Keep these simple, simple things at the back of your mind. So, I will put things. Any confusion? Now, what you are telling is, leave one space, two spaces, three, four and five. But the beauty is, a non-breakable space is something which the browser will not break. It will preserve. Which means this time you will get hello, five spaces and bye. Really will this happen? Let me show you. If in case I take you to my browser window and if I just refresh the page, you can notice five spaces are there. Beautiful, isn't it? Amazing, isn't it? This is the magic of HTML entities. It helps you do things which otherwise the browser would get confused about. There are many such HTML entities. Maybe as we go, wherever it is relevant, we will learn. Because we can't spend time looking at all the HTML entities because there are hundreds of them. But there is one more type of HTML entity which I feel you guys would love to use in your websites today. What is that? Let me show you. Okay, now, all the different entities aside, I feel there is this one entity which you would be using a lot, especially in your websites. In today's websites, this has become very popular, which is nothing but emojis. Yes, my friend, emojis has become a part of our culture and it is a way using which we express our emotions through the otherwise very dry and static chat. Just an addition of an emoji conveys the emotion behind the message being written, right? So, how can we add emojis if you ask me? Definitely, it can be done using HTML entities itself. And if I have to give you an example, I will just go put a p tag. And within the p tag, like this, I will now just put an emoji. And you know the syntax, ampersand, because I am putting a decimal value, hash is there. And then semicolon is there at the end. 1, 2, 8, 5, 1, 2. Which emoji is this? Let us execute and check. If in case I go to my browser window and if in case I put in the relevant command and if in case I refresh it, as you can see, it is a smiley face. Now, you might again ask, where will I find all these different codes for the emojis? There are so many websites. One such website is this website called as Emoji Chart. Right? You can find all the different emojis and you can see their decimal code is also available here. For example, I'll just copy one decimal code, any one decimal code I'm copying it. If I go back to my uh, editor and there if I replace this with that, I'll just replace this. Then as you can see, this is the code and this is the hexadecimal code of course. Let us see which emoji is this. So, if I go back and if in case I try to execute this, so I'll go to the other window and there if in case I refresh, you can notice eyes are rolling up. Any confusion till this point of time? So, definitely 
emojis is another application where html entities can be used i hope till this point of time whatever i have spoken is clear and html entities are also clear to you guys now another use case for html entities is if in case you want to have such symbols yes as you can see these are the currency symbols of different currencies across the world even for this html entity codes are there as you can see there is a code for each of these different currency symbols not only that if you want symbols like this copyrighted reserved all these kind of symbols are also having their corresponding html entity code associated with it and those are the codes i have put couple of these commonly asked uh, symbols or used symbols in the notes please go check it out but i hope html entities is clear